So I have a tamarillo here, which is a fruit that is also called the tree tomato. It's related to tomatoes. It's in the same genus, but uh, as you can see, it's a little bit different looking, different stem. I've reviewed this before, guys. I reviewed this a long time ago. Actually, in my first episode, I reviewed this. And then years after that, I reviewed it again, comparing two different varieties of these, yellow ones and uh, red ones. So I don't know why I'm here. What else could I possibly do with a tamarillo? Yes, it's everybody's favorite segment. I'm going to see if you can make ketchup out of a tamarillo. I'm just gonna cut this right down the center and show the inside. So it looks a little bit like a tomato on the inside, but different color, different texture. These, by the way, were sent to me by MiamiFruit.org. Thank you, MiamiFruit.org, for sending me so many fantastic things. If you want to buy uh, Tamarillos, guys, they are available on their website. Link in the description below. Uh, I've got a promo code, too. So, uh, yeah, on the ones I had way back when, the outer bit was very, very bitter and unpleasant. On this one, it's actually not that bad. You don't want to eat the very outer skin. That is uh, pretty tough, so you don't want that. It's like eating a piece of cellophane, but like on the inside, that is all good stuff. The very, very best bit is like the part with the seeds on the center. That bit tastes like... <sighs> Mmm. Strong, sour, fruity, but savory. It tastes a lot like, well, it's like tomatoes, but far fruitier and more tropical tasting. So it's kind of like if you would take tomatoes and cross it with like a guava, or maybe a little bit like mango. So tomatoes are a little bit fruity, maybe a teeny bit. These are very fruity, so when you eat this, it feels more like a fruit and less like a vegetable. Like, there's a reason why people use tomatoes for savory applications. It's got a savory taste. This thing also has a savory taste, which is weird, but it also has a very fruity taste. It would be a good thing to use for uh, anything that you would use tomatoes in that also has like sweet things in it, like salsa and stuff like that. or ketchup. So the uh, the outer bit here, this is not, none of the seeds or anything, none of the flesh on the inside, just the very, very outer part of it. It's slightly bitter. It has a slight flavor like the inside, but it's much milder. So you can use it, but it's best if you use both parts, which is what I'm going to do for my ketchup. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my spoon just scoop out the center. Now I'm going to take some of the outer bit, but not all of it. Just kind of, kind of try to get as much of the seed out and leave a little bit of the uh, outer flesh on the outside because it gets more bitter generally as you get towards the skin. Take that, cut it, Like so. You can do that until you got uh, about a cup and a half of it. This pan has some oil in it that I am currently heating up, but I also have some other ingredients here. Biggest one here, I've got uh, a whole onion cut and also a small slice, it's white so it's kind of hard to see, small slice of a very hot pepper. So hopefully this isn't going to be too hot. Normally you'd put like a little bit of cayenne or something in it, but I've got these fresh chili peppers. I'm going to use a little bit of that. It's like a habanero or something. Uh, sent by Matt. Thank you, Matt, from mattspeppers.com. And um, this here is the uh, pulp. Uh, as I said, it's about a cup and a half when you put, look at it all together. You adjust accordingly, uh, and everything doesn't really matter. You can It'll just change the ketchup a little bit. Uh, this is two cloves of garlic. This is one-third cup of white vinegar. This is spice. These spices include uh, salt, allspice, celery seed, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of pepper, um, 
I think that's it. Probably something else that I'm forgetting. I don't know. So that is, uh, that's about it. Also gonna add water to it as it goes along just to get the right consistency. Let's go. Onion and pepper go in. Garlic goes in. This gets mixed up until it is translucent. Looking good so far. I realized that I forgot there's also brown sugar in this. This is uh, two tablespoons of brown sugar. Now, normally I would use a bit more than that for this amount, but because these are a bit sweeter than regular tomatoes, not gonna, not gonna go too crazy with the sugar. So next in here, we're gonna put the spice. They're not like fully translucent yet, won't lie, but uh, getting there. Not use metal on metal, right? Right, I know. Okay, here we go. And this will just wake up those spices. Wake them the hell up. Time. Put it in there. Put the Camarillo pulp in. Put the vinegar in. And the sugar. Teapot here and just get a little splash. It's boiling, so I'm going to uh, lower the heat a bit. You don't want it to get like overflowing or anything, but you do want it to get hot and cooked down in a lot. This is actually going to take some time, probably like 20 30 minutes for it to get ready for the next step. So this is gonna go and what you can do while you're waiting for 20 to 30 minutes is clean up the mess that you made because you probably have tamarillos everywhere and like god knows what else you were doing that day cow pods might be everywhere in my case so um yeah so clean up your mess and then in about 20 minutes or so uh, take a look at it and see how it's doing just keep coming back and agitating this as i go so new deck also making coffee. Oh yeah, so it's been about uh, 30 minutes now and uh, looks pretty good. Nice and thick. So what I'm going to do now is blend this up and uh, let me show you just like what we need for the, the next few steps. First we need the uh, an immersion blender. Uh, my preference is Bamix because this thing is meant to last. You, know, you can't attach this thing to clean it. You gotta like run it under water, which is a little weird, but uh, heavy duty stuff. Uh, next, you need some sort of large vessel, like a glass, to uh, help in the blending process. Because if I were to put this just in there, it's not gonna do. You need something a little bit deeper. Also, I have a uh, little squeeze bottle for said ketchup, and to get it in there, I have a funnel. And my least favorite part is this strainer. You gotta strain that ketchup into uh, whatever. And to make everything much easier, I have this cup of coffee. <sighs> yeah, it's good stuff. All right, let's do it. Nice tall glass of Amarillo and onions. In order to keep it from <laughs> splattering everywhere, do not go in like this. You go in like this. Oh yeah, one of these rubber spatula things is also pretty handy. You take this and you start straining it through the mesh strainer back into the pot. This is extremely annoying and time consuming. If you have kids, this is a great thing to make your kids do so you don't have to. Unfortunately, I just have a cat, so I cannot get my cat to do this. Okay, it's been strained, and uh, this actually looks like about the kind of consistency I want because uh, it's maybe like a little liquidy, 
a little bit more liquidy than regular ketchup, but as you let it chill overnight, it will thicken a little bit. So this is actually kind of perfect, um, but what you should do is also give it a little taste. Now this is not an accurate description of the flavor, but just a way to kind of like test the um, sweetness, spiciness, etc. Hmm. Well, you remember how I said that I was going to put in less sugar because these are sweeter than tomatoes? That was wrong. Okay, so I'm going to add another tablespoon of brown sugar in there. I'll actually turn the heat back on. And if you do this and it's like too liquidy, you could do this as well. You can uh, reduce it down until it is how you want it to be. Because I added some sugar though, uh, just let this go for like another five minutes for this to get dissolved. Okay, mm, you know, don't do this because it's a bad idea. See, we're just boiling hot ketchup, but yeah, that's perfect. Nice, uh, nice sweetness to it. You want to have the sweetness of ketchup, so you might need to add a little bit more. If it uh, lacks anything else, you can add like dry spices and stuff to it. But if you need to add like more fruit or onion or something, then uh, yeah, you're kind of a little too late at this point. So this I'm gonna let cool for like a couple of minutes, and then so let's cap that baby. It looks a lot more like mustard than it looks like ketchup. Awesome. And this is gonna go into the fridge until tomorrow. Good night, Tamarillo ketchup. Good night, Jared. My Tamarillo ketchup has been mellowing out in the fridge for, I don't know, like five days or something. So this should be as good as it's gonna get. I don't have any uh, french fries or anything handy, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on my finger. So let's try just a little dollop of that. Really good. I think I overdid it with the onions a little bit. It's very oniony ketchup, but it is good ketchup. And the flavor in there, it tastes like regular ketchup, but it's stronger. And I don't think it's stronger because of the amount of the tamarillo that I used, but because it has tamarillo instead of tomatoes. They have a very, very powerful taste when you eat them raw, and they definitely have a powerful taste when you put them in here. It's a little bit more savory, and I don't think that's because of the onions. I think it's because tamarillos have like a, like a hardiness to them that goes beyond a regular tomato. And I think it's a little bit more tart. There's like a, a little bit more bite to it. So I think if you are to just give this to somebody instead of ketchup, um, well, if you were to dye it red and give this to somebody uh, instead of ketchup, they would think it was ketchup, but maybe like a special gourmet ketchup. It definitely t tastes different but not so like noticeably different where you're like, oh my God, that is not tomatoes in there. It just tastes like they're really uh, strong, savory, fruity tomatoes. So it's like ketchup with more kick. I think no matter what you make into ketchup, it will taste at least similar to tomato ketchup, but with little differences to it. And this is one that tastes very, very similar to tomato ketchup, but I think it's better. I think it's better because it has more power to it. I think it could be a replacement for tomatoes. It's not super weird in flavor, but it has more kick, it's got more bite, and it's a little bit more tartness, and it's got a more savory, strong tomato flavor in there, even though there's no tomatoes. There are so many things that you can make into ketchup that are related to, to tomatoes and also things that are not. Pineapple ketchup, mango ketchup, what do you think guys? Let me know below and uh, I'll see if I can do that for you. Until then, see you next time. Bye. I want to give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, it's how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you want to help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale. Those are in the description as well. See you next time. Bye.